which is this. Um, you have a very strict definition of empathy. Uh, so you say, well, people don't empathize all the time. But it seems to me that if we define empathy the way you do, uh, it would perhaps be more appropriate to say that uh, people empathize rarely. That is, this is a phenomenon that's, uh, that happens to us, that is untested, but uh, I say that in most cases in which we interact with other people, we sort of are more on the automatic pilot, we don't have this, this time of empathy that you describe. But, I mean, in the sense, you think that, I mean, this is an, an appropriate basis uh, for, for uh, dealing with the animals, uh, because, um, for example, when you describe the way we should teach empathy, it seems to me that what you are teaching uh, people to do is uh, cognitive empathy, in a sense, because you are trying to give, to make them to give a description, to, to reason about. Sure, but to, but to arrive at that description, they need to have embodied empathy or affective empathy. Uh, now, they, could, they can arrive at that description through inference and observation, but that's not yet empathy. And, and I, I'm not as comfortable with that as clinician, but I, I try to make the judgment whether they've gotten it through inference or whether they actually made an empathic move. And yes, it's not something that we do all the time. We don't we're passing each other in the hall and say, how are you? We don't, we don't, no, yeah. okay. you know, so so it's, it's, it's momentary. There's, there's very strong gender differences. Women do it much, much more. There's certain professions that do it much, much more. Uh, Client-centered therapy, Kyle Rogers, so that, that's all he did was empathize. Uh, so it, it, it does vary and in, in different contexts. Uh, we do it more or less. And also, as I indicated, we de-educate people, both in terms of the object of empathy and in terms of assuming the empathic mode. We teach people to back off, to be detached, to make observations, to not get mixed up in it. Uh, you know, if, if you're if you're the executive director and you spend a lot of time empathizing, you know you can't fire the person. Uh, so it, 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 it's 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 a tool that we use. Uh, it's uh, it, but uh, what I'm suggesting is that it's a possible posture for an investigator of non-human animals. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah. Uh, there's a question. What is the role of mirror neurons in your opinion of empathy? What is the sorry? The role of mirror neurons. What is the role of mirror neurons? Mirror neurons. 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 I, I, the question is, um, what is the relationship between my theory, I would say, description of empathy and the findings in neurophysiology about mirror neurons? Um, I, I'm, I'm not doing physiology. Uh, I'm happy that we discovered the mirror neuron. I'm happy that we discovered it in other animals. Uh, I, I use uh, phenomenological psychology to understand animals. I don't use mirror neurons to understand other animals. I hope I'm not being flippant, but uh, I, if I look at the physiology of mirror neurons, it is not, I'm not going to get from that the nuances of the empathic experience. So I'm going to start there and then describe those, and then the physiologist can look for possible mechanisms of that. Uh, but my focus is not on physiological mechanisms, it's, at, it's on modes of experience. I 
get what Ken is reserving it for, which is the affective and embodied sense. Uh, and so later on, when I come to give a talk where I'm critical of some aspects of empathy, it's important for people to realize that I'm referring more to cognitive and projective empathy and reserving um, affective and uh, body empathy, I'll call that sympathy. Uh, I know that Ken doesn't use that, and he thinks of it as feeling for, and the word I use for that is pity. Okay. <laughs> sure. yeah, so we, we don't want to get hung up on the terminology, but That's we, right. want, we want to be very clear about which phenomenon we're referring yeah. to, whatever yeah. yeah. term we use. Exactly. It would help if we use the same terminology. Other questions? How about lunchtime? <laughs> okay, wait, before you go, we have to make a decision about when to reconvene. First, I want to thank...